so friends uh, uh, let us start our panel discussion which is uh, uh, portrayal of lgbt in cinema so shushant uh, why don't you uh, uh, put the record in order hi can you hear me yes yes absolutely hi shushant hi hi okay great so first of all thank you so much for uh, joining this panel and i'm very excited uh we're going to talk about uh, the representation of lgbtqi plus uh, characters in uh, mainstream cinema or cinema in general um i would uh, like to ask i would like to leave it open to whoever wants to go first um there isn't as such any real representation of the community uh, firstly i mean in pop culture if you see there is there isn't very uh, significant if i had to say uh, representation of uh, lgbtqia plus people in general that normalize lgbtqia plus community in general so uh, maybe we could start with uh, onir would you like to uh, uh, give us your thoughts on uh, the same yeah i feel that you're yeah, being the world's largest am i clear by audible yes yes, yes. of course yeah. So, being the largest uh, film-producing country in the world, I think the representation of the queer community is dismal, you know. And uh, also, I think the representation is very much uh, only one-dimensional, mostly, uh, especially when it comes to I think the trans community. Not only is representation very, very stereotypical and limited to a certain kind. uh the other uh, i i seriously think what needs to be addressed by the film industry is the lack of transgender people in acting the roles you know there is a huge difference between sexuality and gender and uh, is shushan there or i think is got disconnected yes is yes i am yeah i thought you got disconnected so i feel there is a big uh, difference between gender and sexuality and it's important that people from the transgender community represent act as transgender because you know you don't have yes. male actors acting as heroines or actresses acting as actors so why should a man or a woman play a transgender it's a third gender and i feel that it's of course it can't happen overnight because you need the community to be trained and empowered to be in the space but that process has to start with first accepting the fact that it's a problem which is still not being accepted right right but you know as uh, i would just like to add to what you said uh, is that it's it's very uh, imperative that uh, at least if we are if the trans people are allowed to play trans characters as you said but also that uh, to normalize the transgender community and say that a trans woman regardless of her gender can also play a main lead actress opposite uh, because it then depends on your acting prowess as you said that we need to it doesn't happen overnight but at least we need to take that step in the right direction uh, because uh, as as soon as they identify as uh, female uh, or or uh, women and after transition post transition or even if they are in the process of uh, they should be given equal opportunities i would like to take this uh, question to the other panelists would anyone like to uh, uh, give their perspective on the same absolutely i think uh, what you what you're saying is absolutely right and not only right what i want to also acknowledge is uh, that looking at everything holistically if we look at it and if we see that if a person is promising on the skill front and has the ability to play it on screen why not why not absolutely 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 yeah and you know i have uh, personally experienced this uh, when uh, uh, you know this actress who's a uh, who sub- supposedly i mean happens to be transgender but uh, first she's an artist first she's an actress and then she's transgender so she had gone for this role of a trans person that she had to she had been offered and uh, very blatantly they told her that uh, you know i have you undergone surgery as yet because you look a little trans so i think that you know 
I mean, if it's a trans character, you can't tra- tell a transgender person that you look too trans to play a trans character, you know. And it is very, very uh, sad, and I think it's appalling uh, for uh, us as a fraternity to label and tag people, uh, um, you know, regardless. As I said again, uh, of their orientation. Uh, Onir, uh, in my opinion, in my personal opinion, I believe you're a national treasure, and I have looked up to you while growing up. and uh, i would just like to ask you you know when you were creating scripts and when you were making films speaking about the community and trying to normalize characters and say that you know we are also part of the social fabric did you face any sort of trouble or did you face uh, any sort of dismay from your uh, colleagues uh, firstly thank you shushan for uh, your kind words and you're looking beautiful i have to say that uh, I feel that you know. I mean, I I know a little bit still because we haven't met personally properly. A little bit of your story, and I feel that uh, maybe one thing which is common between both of us is that we had an empowering surrounding. You know, in a sense that families were always supportive of our identity, and I feel that becomes a big part in empowering. to be out and proud and be able to do what one wants to without you know you because the biggest hurdle that a lot of people need to uh overcome even when you know dealing with their art is their own self their own fears and identity and of course uh you know at in 2004 when i was making my brother nikhil because it was the first film where the protagonist male protagonist was gay it was absolutely impossible you know everywhere i went for finance every studio every producer said no and it is only because of my co-producer friend actor sanjay suri is his confidence in not being scared to play a gay man you know and you know he looked at it more like a challenge that as an actor i get to do something that many i mean people don't want to do or scared to do and uh, you know treating it like what an artist should treat it like you know that it's a journey it's a discovery and that's how we made the film independently and ever since then till today i must say you know people keep talking about platforms it's not necessarily easier because we keep you know we will see one uh, made in heaven or one film coming out and we all start dancing but that's been happening for years you know that it's if you really look at the ratio it's the it's a it's not because though the laws have changed the society at large is not uh, changed and i would just like to comment here that i feel that what today the definition of pop culture also shifts into our digital media and what you are doing and a lot some more people are doing with you know uh, be it instagram facebook youtube are as important as significant to take the message of acceptance to you know to further the queer narrative beyond just one space and i i, I respect that a lot right vinit ji i would like to uh, come to you uh, you know as as somebody who i believe is an ally of the community and uh, you know i think the understanding of the lgbtqi plus community in the mainstream is very skewed very negatively skewed as owner pointed out is that there is very typical representation of a trans character or a gay person in the movies uh do you think that it is our duty to uh really sensitize and advocate for uh you know better understanding of the community and how can we go about it absolutely and i think uh, what you're saying is absolutely right and i think we all own a bit of that responsibility everywhere sitting in each and every field however when it comes to filmmakers the responsibility is highest because their reach is the highest you know the outreach that we have as filmmakers you know it is the highest and we can penetrate into the deepest parts of india and abroad as well 
right absolutely and, and absolutely. that is the reason why uh, you know i think it is time for us to start throwing the correct light on uh, this community and uh, you know this this part of our social lives so that people should be able to look at this very clearly and understand rather than you know just making them and i see uh, there has been some traction there has been some movement but right now the movement is very very little it's it's tiny you know it's in specks and right. i think uh, the movement needs to be uh, improving and increasing in number as well and uh, you know it should come out uh, uh, largely on uh, on the screen first and that is when you know it will start penetrating into the nerves of the whole india and people will start accepting this as uh, you know uh, a normal part of their society right right and um as uh, both of you all mentioned uh, owner and vinny ji both mentioned that there are efforts being made uh, but if you see as owner pointed out that the ratio of films that are queer centric or roles that are offered to queer people are maybe one is to a uh, thousand so uh, you know it's uh, and as he said that you know if there is one series or one character in one episode of a series or uh, you know flying a character way in in a film which is like a passing character or something you know everybody starts celebrating it but don't you think that it is uh, also coming from a place where the, the film maker also feels a little uh, quest starts questioning whether you know he will have his allies or his uh, people that will still be supportive of him if he has a queer centric film or an lgbt centric film is that something that you think that uh, affects uh, people's scripts also i feel that one of the things that i've been noticing with platforms because you know the current uh, discussion everywhere is okay with digital platforms you can go ahead and also people telling you that oh put it out on youtube you know without understanding that the economics of filmmaking is not about just putting it out on youtube you know it's not that simple and with the platforms also it is actually in a way slowly becoming similar to what television used to be it's all about eyeballs you know and whatever is perceived you know there was a survey by done by amazon and of their top 10 Uh, 12 series actually made in heaven was you know quite low on uh, viewership though we all loved it you know so and that kind of discourages people to do more than what it is but i feel that a big big i i think that is a uh you know shortcoming of all these platforms and studios is change does not happen overnight acceptance does not happen overnight if you if your only focus is business and money making then don't pretend that you care about inclusion don't pretend that you care about diversity because you don't care you want you know because as a social responsibility as someone who wants progress to happen it is your job that okay you are doing 10 series which will cater to you know it will have as many abuses as many violence sex whatever is needed to cater to your audience but at least have for every 10 series one series which portrays the community the way it should so that slowly slowly people get sensitized where the demand starts happening where the audience is also not uncomfortable watching the stories because these are just beautiful human stories but for that someone has to it has to be a collective effort where we all say that okay it will take time but we need to do this for a better society so owner uh, you know i mean i have always admired you for speaking your mind not only on uh, through your films and your scripts but also uh, you so beautifully put your point across without uh, really um attacking anybody or you know being aggressive uh, when i could take a point or two from your uh, from from the way you conduct yourself but uh, and i am i am trying you know <laughs> uh, but i i have to tell you that you know uh, as gr- uh, while i was growing up uh, i was born in 1990 so you know when i was growing up i saw the first probably the first 
depiction of uh, a gay couple or a gay character was your movie that i saw when i was in school and uh, that is when i was sort of there was a conflict between within myself about my orientation and uh, you know but because we was you were speaking about hiv in the movie and you know all of these things there was uh, th- because there was a lack of understanding within the with uh, with the larger society there used, there was a lot of um, uh, people that came forward and uh, you know said that but you see if you're gay you know this will happen and if you're gay that will happen and you will not have a relationship that will be recognized outside of your four walls of your house and uh, but it was so poignant and it was so pertinent to the times that we were living in and even till today i don't think we have gone way, very very much ahead of course uh, section 377 is in the dustbin uh, and uh, but you know there were people that started these conversations and these narratives like yourself and uh, i would just like to uh, thank you on uh, on behalf of my entire generation uh, for sure but also you know people out there that did not have any representation whatsoever which was in a positive light so thank you so much owner and i would just like to uh, hear from you what is this one thing that you would like to tell the filmmakers today or the directors or people that are investing in cinema what would you like to tell them what is the one message that you would like to give as a filmmaker i feel that you know in a in a industry where we can see that there is a serious lack of original stories you know people are only repeating the formula one after another if you're in web space you see that you know you will see 10 one mirzapur do well and you left 10 other similar web series with you know set in the town lots of violence underworld i think that you're missing out forget anything a lot of beautiful powerful stories of the community that you can bring forward as a film maker you know whether you are queer or straight does not matter you know i feel that film making is a journey of learning about life yourself and through that journey i feel that you will only enrich yourself and i feel that we have such a powerful tool you know if you are in a position of power and you know you do it with your media is it so so important also for people who are from the community to step out and say that look this is who i am and i'm proud of myself and these are our stories because it encourages empowers so many pe- more people you know in some corner of villages and towns to you know look up and say yes there look there is a shushant out there and he's independent and he's fearless and he's doing things that he wants to and people love and respect him and there is you know bringing us people so it's important for more and more of us one is from the community to step out of the shadows and claim our space so that many more can claim their space and secondly it's important to use our platform to tell our stories tell those untold stories that more and more people who are not from the community also understand us hear our voice recognize to see us because very often they tend to make us invisible uh, right by, thank you by the way i remember uh, onir uh, directed a short film uh, titled farewell uh, for uh, star so uh, why don't we uh, show the film to our viewers now this, i think this is the right time to show this film so very sure. short minute film so just i wanted to add one thing this film was made for star plus to celebrate the supreme court verdict on ipc 370 oh wow okay that's so, amazing that's amazing uh, thank you thank you so much uh, for having me also and owner you are as i said a national treasure you're legendary <laughs> and i'm so don't embarrass happy. me now <laughs> oh no but it's it's the truth the children should know it you know and then when they're watching uh, this conversation whenever they do you know there might be another sushant that is in school today and is watching us and watching you and needs to know uh, you know your contribution towards the community and society at large so thank you really thank you so much and uh, 
I can't wait. I don't know, Onir. What am I supposed to do do for you to sign me? <laughs> When are we going to work together? Soon. I, I'm waiting for the day. You know, it will be an absolute honor for me. And my mom's right there, and she's just like, "What? What? Are, why you do?" I'm like, "Listen, I'm going to just ask him because I'm such a fan, <laughs> also, and I'm such a, a an honest admirer of you as a person. You know, and in your honor, I wore this beautiful." Uh, you know little uh, thing from this wonderful designer in kolkata bobo have you heard of him no so yeah uh, and uh, you know i said that you know i want to look the part so now you tell me and i will send you an audition tape <laughs> <laughs> soon inshallah uh, i remember it, there are a few films where uh, lgbt community has been portrayed very sensitively and one film which comes into my mind is uh, pakistani film bol Anyone remembers Bone? Yeah, yeah, I've seen Bone, and I think uh, it was yeah. really, really wonderful the way the trans uh, character, who is the girl's brother, uh, you know, uh, brother, that character, I think it was beautifully represented. Very sad, of course, because you know what happens in the film really shocked its one. But I thought the friendship between uh, I don't remember the name of the character, the character played by Atif Aslam. I think, and that uh, boy was so beautiful. So you know, where it was absolutely non-judgmental, affectionate, loving, almost like an elder brother. Also, and it was beautiful. And it has been dealt with so so much sensitivity, uh, more than sexual orientation. Uh, the film has focused on emotional aspect of the community. How do they feel in the body, uh, in the wrong body which they are? So that that has been portrayed very beautifully in the film bowl. And yeah, but uh, also Harsh uh, Pakistan happens to uh, you know uh, decriminal. I mean, uh, recognize the third gender before India did. You know, yeah. so that's uh, also a fact that in certain ways it was ahead of us in accepting the third gender. Right. So uh, any Indian film you remember which uh, has uh, given such. Uh, portrayal to the community sushant what if you... there was this uh, there was this wonderful uh, uh, it was a south indian uh, uh, super deluxe on netflix that i watched which was a wonderful transition of uh, you know this uh, this boy into uh, you know accepting uh, themselves as trans transgender and i thought that that was very beautiful super deluxe of of course shridhar uh, you know has also made a lovely film which is evening shadows and uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, you know as as we said and then of course you have the more mainstream ones that like you know made in heaven and uh, um, and there are a couple of more characters that are uh, shown very normally like they've normalized the characters my i my whole thing of a portrayal of lgbt community uh, on screen is that it should be normalized So, so there um, is this also very beautiful uh, film from South India made in 2006 called Sancharam. It's perhaps one of the most beautiful lesbian films uh, made apart from Fire, which were powerful, yes. absolutely normalized and made many years ago. That uh, that film is also quite uh, lovely. Yeah. So uh, I think. Onid, I wanted to ask uh, about your film, uh, which I watched uh, your last film, which Bhige Alfaz. So I just wa- wanted to uh, discuss about that. It's it's a very beautiful film, a love story, uh, where uh, uh, the the protagonist is a uh, 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 the actor is a Kashmiri actor, and uh, he has portrayed the uh, role. Uh, uh, it's a the beautiful romance so did you uh, wanted to uh, want to bring the uh, era of that uh, nostalgic romance back to because we don't often see the nostalgic uh, romance uh, these days i the feel film. that uh, one as a filmmaker you want to you know obviously uh, do various work on various genres and i wanted to for a long time have to wanted to do something which was <clears throat> a romance you know and when the script came to me what fascinated me was this old world charm you know of the radio of the poetry and i feel that urdu as a language is so stunning so beautiful 
and uh, the script had a lot of scope to use Urdu poetry. Secondly, the film being set in Calcutta was another attraction for me that, you know, I could, uh, you know, shoot in the city of my youth, you know, and in places which had a lot of memories, nostalgia for me. And uh, so it was a perfect combination of poetry, old world charm of the radio, which is, you know, once again, actually radio is something which is once again finding its footing, especially because a lot of people are on the move, you know, in cars, going to office, one hour, two hour, and then, you know, they're listening to the radio and it's become, it's coming back in a big way. And I feel that this film explores that, how, you know, uh, old media and new media come together because there is the world of the radio and then there is the world of memes and Facebook and WhatsApp and Instagram. So both the worlds come together in which big fires through the male and the female character. Radio. And taking from that point, I would like to say it's so true that, you know, radio is, uh, has uh, revived itself as a medium of uh, reaching people through stories and through real stories. And I've had the good fortune, Onir, uh, I don't know whether you are, you're aware that mm, we have the only uh, LGBTQ show on uh, Red FM. Wow. And uh, I, uh, I was one of the hosts. Wow, and uh, because of the lockdown, of course, we've uh, minimized the number of episodes, but it's still... Uh, the only LGBT show right now on, uh, and we speak about very real stories coming out, parents, uh, you know, the parents struggle uh, when it comes, to, when they come from smaller towns or when, they, when they're not, they're more conservative in their thoughts. And so I think that, uh, and also my parents are featured on that. And, you know, there are beautiful uh, support groups that also we speak to and speak about. So um, absolutely agree with everything that you've said. Uh, Sushant, what kind of projects you are working right now? So uh, my uh, first ever Hindi single uh -huh. was released uh, by MTV uh, India, MTV Beats. Uh -huh. And uh, I always used to only watch, you know, I keep saying this uh, when I was growing up and I wanted to be, I wanted to be that indie pop star, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the independent musician and that, that beautiful uh, era which we had Alisha Chinai, Shweta Shetty, Sunita Rao, Lucky Ali. And uh, my all-time favorite is Usha Uttup. Uh, and, you know, that's why I kind of, you know, have that, have trained my vocal dexterity to sort of be able to sing in a male and female voice because I've always seen her and then Falguni Patak. So, you know, and when I got this uh, opportunity and it's, it's right now on TV and it'll play about five times a day on MTV. And I thought that it was a great, uh, a great opportunity to um, collaborate with a youth channel because that is where... Uh, you know, you have to start like, you know, the, the, the youth of our country are yeah, the future of tomorrow. So, you know, they have been so beautifully accepting and they've sent such wonderful messages saying that uh, it's a wonderful song and the video is shot very beautifully. Um, and uh, there's, uh, there's two beautiful dancers in that and the whole theme was maybe and I, I stepped away from my comfort zone because my genres of preference are pop and uh, disco and retro and soft rock jazz but i did a little semi classical indian uh, touch to it and uh, and uh, i did the alaps and uh, everything and i challenged myself because i said that you know you have to put out even as an artist you have to be eclectic you can't uh, you can't push away something if we act, uh, expect other people to step out of their comfort zone then we also must step out of our comfort zone and so i uh, just went ahead and uh, you know practiced a lot i did a lot of riyas and uh, and then the song is out there, so I hope everyone enjoys it. So you, you have learned ragas also. I had, uh, you know, when I was a little younger, I because you know I was a very very uh, problematic child in a way where I could my attention span was not more than a minute, mm -hmm. and uh, so it was very difficult <coughs> to make me sit and learn, you know, an instrument or uh, train me vocally. But then as I uh, as time progressed and I grew a little older when I was in like in college that's when I started realizing that even though my voice had sort of matured uh, but I could also sing in the falsetto uh, mm -hmm. which is in you know in different octaves uh, which is very which is very rare but uh, and I, I just went ahead with it and I was like okay if I can hit that note 
I will hit it. <laughs> wow. uh, so you seemed uh, seems to be skeptical about film music, getting getting into film music. I am not at all skeptical. What I am skeptical about is the lyrics. Okay. The lyrics sometimes are very problematic to me. Uh, I hate the fact that uh, we have to objectify, uh, you know, people and compare them to inanimate objects and uh, stuff, which is, which tandoori in my chicken. opinion, and tandoori chicken <laughs> and alcohol, and you know, in a way, it is promoting the objectification of women, of men, of trans people, of people in general. And I think that I don't have an issue. I would love to sing in films. but you know the the sort of songs which are soulful which are meaningful which have which can stand the test of time nowadays people are more interested in how many likes they get how much how much do they monetize the video or you know so they try and sell sex they try and sell uh, you know unparliamentary language and i i think that uh, we have to change the narrative if we want to see a change we have to be the change Right. so um as a millennial if i can do it i think that uh, i would expect better from my colleagues mm -hmm. and you you have acted also so what kind of uh, 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 roles you have done um uh, you know there was this one short film that i did which was the chair and uh, unfortunately i felt sick uh, so i couldn't uh, dub for it mm -hmm. so my dubbing was done by someone i'm i'm I didn't really much appreciate that because I love doing uh, my own dubbing. So that was one of my most challenging roles where I had to play uh, uh, somebody who is heterosexual, uh, uh, you know, in terms of who shows the world he's heterosexual, but then comes across this one person that uh, you know lets him be, and then he realizes that he's uh, uh, you know he is interested in cross dressing and probably one day would want to be a woman. so that whole journey and transition of that character i thought was uh, the most challenging for me because i was we were literally shooting it uh, on the streets of bombay oh. mumbai and uh, you know everyone was looking at me and i was like a little <laughs> yeah so um, i was a little it was tough for me to act straight <laughs> you know, i see uh, sushant that uh, person uh, there is uh, there is again object objectification identification because a person who belongs to lgbt community are given only the roles to represent lgbt they they, uh, they uh, why not why, why don't they get a role just to play a professor or a, or a character uh, exactly yes i i absolutely agree and in fact owner said this in the right in the beginning of the uh, our chat that um, you know um, they are not even see as the people from within the community are not even given the opportunity to play gay characters for example or queer characters mm -hmm. those characters are also played by straight people heterosexual actors right. and then the trans characters are also played by women or or male who dress up as women my thing is then where does the community go it's not like we're not talented we we don't want to work hard we also want to be productive we also want to uh, engage in uh, creating a better social fabric for the society we want to do that we don't want to stand on the streets beg sell our bodies we don't want to do all of that you know but we don't have when some of us are some of our trans sisters and you know we we try and label them and say oh my god she you know she's a sex worker mm -hmm. they don't have a choice have we left them with any choice we don't want to give them education we don't want to give them jobs uh and and then you expect them to uh, you know have the vernacular uh, to to deal with things and and then expect them to make a dignified living how how does that happen i would like to know that so uh it, it's something that we need to uh, think about because it is uh, it's 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 appalling to me as uh, as a humanitarian and i think that we need to really step it up and be more human So today I was uh, <coughs> earlier today I was <coughs> doing this workshop, part of this workshop, which is uh, scripts uh, from the community, uh, you know, stories about the community, and there were like one of the scripts which was really very nice uh, was a script uh, which dealt with the transgender <coughs> community. and the reason at the end of it i did not want one of the reasons i think won that script to be the winner is that i was a little i'm a little tired of the transgender community constantly being portrayed as prostitutes 
you know, because I know so many people who are lawyers, doctors, politicians, you know, and I think it's time to start seeing the representation also change that just like, why couldn't just a character in a film who is a doctor happen to be transgender, period. You know, that is what I think ideally should happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, Onir, what kind of works you are uh, planning now? Because uh, it was a very difficult time for past six months yeah. and uh, no work uh, eventually happened in our industry. So right now, immediately, actually, I've been traveling for the last 15 days. And again, from 7th, I start traveling. I'm working on a research for a web series. So that is one thing. Apart from which, I'm working on the sequel of I Am. And it's a film called We Are, where each of the stories are four love stories of the queer community, a gay love story, a trans love story, a lesbian love story, and a bisexual love story. And uh, I, my vision for the film is to cast as many people from the community enacting the role. So, uh, or be also in behind the scene and in front of the camera, both ways. So I want to do it like an experiment and uh, I'm looking forward to, you know, doing it sometime next year. Okay. Uh, how was the pandemic time uh, of last six months? Uh, uh, actually very hectic because one is I didn't have, you know, like I live with my parents who are quite, you know, they aged. So, uh, because the maid was not coming, so suddenly, you know, I was doing all the cooking, housework. Apart from which, just to keep myself busy, I was doing, uh, you know, uh, I did a uh, short film festival workshop kind of thing, competition for six weeks, mm -hmm. which had all like well-known filmmakers and critics as jury. Uh, apart from it, I was trying to learn a little bit of salsa. <laughs> I was trying to learn Hindustani mm -hmm. classical music. And, you know, so I just wanted to keep myself as busy as possible, work on a couple of scripts so that, you know, the idea is it's a, it's a situation where you can either let yourself go into depression or just say that, no, I can use the time productively. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's kind of lonely because, you, because I'm with my parents, you can't meet anybody. I'm like very, very, even now, nobody is allowed to come home. But uh, having said that, I feel that I kept myself really busy. And I keep telling people that, you know, it's not easy, but it's not impossible to keep positive and keep doing stuff. Uh, by the way, I wanted to ask both of you, uh, just two days ago, government has announced that uh, theaters, multiplexes can open uh, uh, this month. Uh, but the, we are yet uh, uh, going through a uh, difficult pandemic time. It's, a, uh, it's very risky. So what do you think? What is your opinion? See, I feel that if you are allowing flights, which is closed aircraft for three hours, sometimes <laughs> more, because yeah. there are international special flights also going. Yeah. Then two hours in a film, which is much larger space, mm. where you can easily, like flights, they're not in, even leaving the middle seats unoccupied. So that way, you know, the thing is, there is the danger, but I feel after now nearly seven months, that one has to negotiate and live with it because we can't, there is no sign, honestly, of vaccine, whatever. And just like we all need to get back to work, there will be risks. We have to play it as safe as possible. But this industry is also livelihood for lakhs of people. Mm -hmm. It's not just about employment. You cannot suddenly, you know, you cannot continue to dispossess them. You know, they need to get back to work. They need to, you know, it is not going to be easy. But at least even with, theaters, I feel that there is a way we need to figure out how with 50% of it, it's at least it started. It's not that people are going to all go running back to the theater. It's anyway going to take time, but that step needs to be, it's too precious an industry to let it die. Sushant, I want to ask this question to you as well, uh, differently. Uh, the, you see, we, we all see that uh, OTT has taken over, the digital has taken over everything. Television audience are also migrating to OTT. Uh, film audience, of course, have migrated to OTT right now for the time being. 
so what do you th- see the future uh, future uh, will be driven by ott or uh, uh, cinemas will again become a the, uh, the daddy big daddy so the cinemas uh, you know as onil rightly put it uh, uh, include uh, a lot of facets that maybe an ott doesn't mm-hmm. uh it provides as he said employment to lakhs and lakhs of people uh, unfortunately i i personally know of a lot of uh, people that have had a very difficult time because as uh, you know as other daily wage workers are considered daily wage workers so are our ad so are our makeup artists so are our spot boys so are our costume dadas and so you know the thing is that nobody has really spoken about these things uh having said that you have to exercise caution because uh, as he said that the uh, the, uh, the vaccine has not yet been introduced and there uh, we don't have any knowledge of when it will be also so uh, we have to of course exercise caution but as again i will quote him and say that you know if you can allow flights and so with a minimum occupancy in a theater and again you know everyone's not going to run to the theater right away so definitely the ott platforms have done marginally much better than they were doing earlier because i personally have i think probably watched everything on all the otts okay and uh, uh, you know because we've got so much more time on our hands we have got so much more um, you know the the uh, the mental sort of cap- uh, capacity and capability of also imbibing all this information see uh, even if there are 200 films in a year you and i don't go and watch all 200 anyway right. in the theaters right, right? so the thing is that the ott the consumption of ott content has drastically increased because like there are some that you know we like uh, there are some days where i watch a recommendation that pops up on a netflix or an amazon because i have nothing you know more to do on that particular day so then i watch that also but they're still getting monetized for that mm-hmm. so the thing is that it's a it's a completely different ball game altogether but they're not you cannot have an ott platform and say that that is that can only function in a, in a vacuum because there also needs to be cinema that has to be represented in the theaters because that's a that's a very big money making industry and uh, and and it in, adds to the gdp if mm-hmm. if if uh, you know sim- simply put it adds to the uh, economic structure of the of this country definitely we are probably one not probably we are the most uh, illustrious when it comes to uh, making films and we it's not only bollywood there are so many various industries regional cinema there is so much uh, happening in our country there is so much folk culture there is so much pop culture there is so much culture just generally that there is space for everything and i think that yes the the films have taken a hit but not to say that it will not uh, revive itself and it's too precious an industry as onir said uh, to lose out on i i'll just add to that is also i think the big difference is <clears throat> between platform and cinemas is the watching experience is different there are two different mediums you know today like when television came in everybody at that point thought that oh this is the end of cinema it was never the end of cinema because you know a group of people going 100 people sitting together and watching celebrating something together is a very different experience which cannot happen in a mobile phone while watching a film or a you know laptop or so it's a different form of course just like you know if you look at it's not just the film industry the hotels are all shut right now does it mean that people will now start traveling online mm-hmm. and stop traveling no we will get back to our lives we will get over covid and we will travel we will stay in hotels and hotels and lives uh, sushant i want to ask you one question specifically uh, in ott digital uh, can you hear me sushant yes yeah so in ott digital uh, since there is no censorship uh, the uh, issues we were talking about earlier uh, so object uh, so there is a voice which says that objectification has increased uh, to sell the content in digital ott because there is no censorship so i believe and you all believe that there should be artistic freedom for an artist to express himself or herself but don't you think uh, uh, it is also getting exploited uh, for commercial reasons but ha- i mean there is exploitation in every industry mm-hmm. uh and and every industry when i say this 
even in the films mm-hmm. so uh, and and in if i had to reverse that and say that we have been exploited for thousands of years mm-hmm. uh, for just being uh, not thousands maybe hundreds uh, because before the britishers came and really you know uh, killed killed our rained on up rained on up parade before that we were very diverse and we were very accepting of sexual diversity so mm-hmm. exploitation occurs everywhere and the only thing is i think that there should be uh, see, this should come also from the person making the content mm-hmm. they should have also feel some responsibility towards the content they are putting out there so i believe that it is a it's it's a double sided sort of a sword when i when i say this is that you know it's fun some sometimes it's fun to watch but sometimes they you know push the envelope a little too much and uh, you know because you also have kids and then you know you the now nowadays everybody has a phone uh, you know so what you put on the ott platforms um of course if you can't censor it you should i i'm not for censoring and saying that no but because once that happens then everybody will come with their two bit and say ye bhi mat karo wo bhi mat karo wo bhi mat karo you'll have a blank screen at the end of the day you'll have one hour of just blank space like this you'll see nothing <laughs> yes you know so my thing is that to each their own but i think that uh, we have to be a little careful and we have to be a little mindful as to uh, you know what our audiences can also consume at this moment uh, actually so i want to ask both of you a uh, uh, main question this platform which i have created indus valley digital uh, this is a platform with the aim to create a, a, a platform where uh, filmmakers creative professionals from across south asia uh when i say south asia all south asian countries uh, nepal pakistan bangladesh sri lanka india uh, so creative professionals from all these countries can collaborate they can meet they can network uh, they can learn from each other's work and also they can seek uh, uh, co-production joint ventures and then uh, we can present a unified creative industry to the world internationally uh, creating a larger market for uh, filmmakers so what do you think about this platform which we are trying to create in this valley uh harsh anyway i've been a part of this festival when we went to pakistan in 2018 mm-hmm. and i feel that yes we have the shared culture which you know just like eu is eu actually it's 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 it would have been such a beautiful world if we were like the south asia or you know the indian subcontinent as such together but unfortunately you know after that trip i remember having planned to make a film which was indo pakistan shoot there but unfortunately situations are such that this whole you know wish there is from both sides of the border artists want to collaborate because we speak about peace and i feel what people don't understand is yes we do not support the fact that there are soldiers which are who are dying both sides of the <laughs> border they, both sides of the border are human beings who have families which are get devastated because of politics and whatever and that problem is there that needs to be sorted out the political dialogue has to happen not just shooting because you know ultimately it is we don't as artists we don't want people to die and that's why it's important to let the dialogue between artists continue at every stage because this is the only hope for peace that we keep talking and when we keep having the dialogue we actually realize how much more love is actually there which we are not letting each of each of our uh, citizens to feel you know love that as an indian i've experienced in pakistan and a lot of my pakistani friends have experienced in india there are it's not to say that there are no problems problems need to be dealt but that does not mean by negating the love that's there we need to nurture love and art is one of the best ways of doing it collaborating together you know this entire region we can you know share we have so much to give to the world so chat uh, we have a cultural and historical legacy in south asia should we not leverage it in your opinion to come together absolutely i think uh, not only in a particular subcontinent but i think as artists from around the world and i've had the good fortune in my in my 20s to have seen most of the world and i think because i travel because art has no barriers i have gone i have performed in um, even uh, in country i performed in bangladesh in drag 
uh, okay and they loved it wow. because at the end of the day it's uh, you know of course there law there will be laws in place and stuff against uh, homosexuality but they still celebrated the art of drag where i dressed up as uh, you know i mean in 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 all my finery uh, as rani kohinoor and uh, performed there for the their cultural departments and i was a cultural ambassador for india i don't think you know we should make it about uh, after a point and and we have to you, you know you say this in a unified voice across uh, um, you know subcontinents and countries in my opinion yeah uh, so i thank you both for joining today it was a wonderful discussion and interaction and uh, you both uh, are so graceful and uh, interesting personal personality dear onir is a dear friend for past few years and i always enjoy interacting with him uh, and thank I, you harsh <coughs> same here yes i'll second you on that <laughs> and i got love to, onir love you too and i got to know sushant today and i think we will become a very good friends in coming times yeah sure thank you so much for having me thank you thank you bye bye thank you bye see you again